What's up, y'all? You are now catching some a sunny vibes here. Yeah. You know I have a bag talk feeling. It's a sunny. And these vibes that you catching gon' get you wet like the sunny. Slippin' drippin' tsunami. And if you ride the wave, don't play these games like Jumanji. Seeing that, though, that was crazy. 
Like seeing that at a young age? Yeah, that's it was crazy. It was crazy yeah. seeing that at that age. So what was your household like growing up? Um, um, my household, I was very blessed to have both of my parents. Facts, everybody my, don't get that. Yeah, my mom and my dad, and my mom, that's my superhero. And my dad too, like my mom is my rock, you feel me? He wrote me today, so I'm blessed to have him. And you know my sister, but love my sister too. Okay, okay, so it was just growing up, it was just you, your mom, and your sister, and the dad in the house. Yeah. Your mom and your dad still together now? Yeah, so still together to this day. Oh. Um, they strong for us. So okay. I don't know. Okay, okay, that's good. So, how old are you, though? I'm 19 years old. 19? Yeah. You graduated high school? I graduated in 2019, so yeah. Okay, okay. okay, what school you graduated from? I graduated from Raven. Shout out Raven. to Raven. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's like, don't you got to get accepted to get in that school? Yeah, all that. So, yeah. Shout out to Raven though. They made me. They made me who I am and who I am now. Part of me, so. Facts, facts. So why would you say they made you? Like, what what changed? Like, so would you say, like, after you left Towers, you went to Arabia, right? Uh, nah, look, um, the area code was Towers. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but my mom did not want me going over there just because, you know, stuff was going on and stuff like that. So we moved before High school even started. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you was going to Arabia a whole exactly. high school. Yeah, yeah. whole ninth oh. grade since then. Okay, so, okay. So you never experienced like a high school where you just had four classes a day? Cause I know Arabia yeah, got about Arabia eight, eight classes. Bro. <laughs> eight classes, eight. Bro. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, bro. <laughs> uh, so like, what uh, what was your favorite subject in school? Um, is art a, art a subject? Art, art. <laughs> I call it a subject, but other people. Well, like art, English, subject. English, art, all of that, and yeah, English and art and stuff like that, cause that's just that's me. Like I knew me from the beginning. I knew I was different, but the art and the literature, English stuff. Yeah. That's just me, cause writing and poetry and all that. So, that's that was all me from the jump. And that math, like, nah. Facts. Unless we can count the money, but anything yeah. else, no. Um, yeah, I feel that, I feel that. <laughs> so, how was high school for you, though? Mm. And so, high school for me, it was a, a life-changing experience. But yeah. I say it was, a, it was a journey, too, like everything else in life. But um, I say it, it, um, it builds character, like where I went. And like, ninth yeah, grade, Arabia, yeah, yeah, from ninth grade to to I say twelve to eleven, but like <clears throat> I wasn't even like who I was now, who I am now, of mm -hmm. course. But like I said, was it was probably bad for me, cause like uh, being like being different, you know where I at, at where I was at. Yeah. And like it's it's a uh, dang I can't even find words for it. Well, it wasn't like except like people look at you like oh what you doing like you know I got laughed at a lot. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that, but until they made until I was senior year, like senior year is when all this stuff started putting into motion. You know, guys just start working with me. So right. it was it was a good and bad experience, but I'm, I'm grateful for it all. I'm grateful for it all. Okay, so, okay. So you say like basically like folks weren't really messing with you in high school like that. Yeah, they were, I see they was messing with me. Yeah. Them, I played football, soccer, all that. Oh, okay, okay. But I feel like at the same time I was misunderstood too because of the the art side that you see now. Like that that's why I'm here now. But that little side too, like just trying to be me. Like I was trying to be somebody else. I I could say that because I'm real with myself. So yeah. Ninth grade through eleventh grade, I was trying to be somebody else. You still finding me. yourself. Exactly. And yeah. that's what I felt like I did twelfth grade year. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm just so like you see me right here. I'm just grateful for it right now. Thanks, but thanks. yeah, I found myself. I could say that I'm still finding who I am. But I found like my base, like who I am. So, gotcha, yeah. I got gotcha. you. So what are the sports you played in high school? Man, I played football, soccer. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, football is number one punter in the Cal County. Right. First team all region, first team all county, first team all metro. Um, yeah, soccer. I was 2018, 2017 the Cal. Um, player, the defensive player of the year, all that. So everything I did, I was gonna try to be the best at. Right. Right. Got you. to this day. So yeah. So. You saying you was on, um, like, you was awarded, like, number one in the Cal County and stuff like that, so you ain't never get no scholarship? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, 
I actually just did it recently too. For um, right now I'm at a JUCO right now, uh, for soccer though. Okay, okay. So that's where I'm at right now. But football, like I learned that, man, I love that jump. Like just going out and punting, I get off the field too. Like give me that, man. So <laughs> hey, they make a lot of money that's too. That's what I'm saying. Man. <laughs> like I play other positions like um, running back, linebacker, all that stuff. Yeah. But you feel me? I just the punting. I just start getting out on a niche. You know, when I came number one, I was like, bro, I could dominate this. So let's just be smart and not hurt my body and stuff like that. But yeah. Okay, okay. So how did you start singing? When did that come along? Man, <laughs> I started singing. I, I said I got inspiration all the way back from when I was little. When like, you was little? Yeah, when I was um at church. You know, my yeah, mom I figured that. That's yeah. so crazy. I figured yeah. it. Yeah. So, but uh, at church, but I, it, I didn't take it serious yeah. until same year, like I was saying. And I wrote this song for my girl at the time. I'm telling you, <laughs> love him, boy. Love him, boy type stuff. I wrote this song for my girl. And I was uh, I wrote the song, though, like 10th grade. Yeah. So that's when uh, 11th grade, something like that. When I was real, like, I could say I was in love. Right? Like, that's how I was feeling. Yeah. So I wrote it. I wrote it. Um, But I just kept it to her. And, like, it was between me and her. But I started taking it serious until 12th grade. I dropped it, bro. One, uh, it was, like, October. It just went crazy from there, like real crazy. Yeah. So you dropped that song that you made for. Were y'all still going out when you when you dropped it? Yeah, we were. Okay. And I was uh, that's when I got hurt doing football though. Like, and that's crazy because after I got hurt doing football, I felt like I just lost my lost my purpose. You know, because I yeah. felt like that was just my thing. I was gonna get my future. I, I'm always focused on my future and stuff like that. So I, so when that happened, I was like, bro, what else I got going? Music. music. So I just hopped in there, I was just dropped the song. It started going crazy, you know. And that was a uh, shout out to Ruby again, because that's when I started doing uh, shows like at the school. It's just started building, building a fan base and stuff like that over there. Facts, facts. So you built your fan base with your people first. Exactly. Facts, facts. So how do your parents feel about you choosing to be an artist? They, um, I'm grateful for them because they support me, like, fully. Just like they did with the sports and all of that. Yeah. They support me fully with the um, artists. Once again, I'm grateful for that because not everybody, you know, has that. But they support me and everything that I that I do. Like, you know, as far as long as I keep God first and my purpose. You know, so, gotta keep God first. Exactly. But they support it and, you know, the singing, all that. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I said, I, you know, and then you started in church. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. Thanks, thanks. So, what, what makes you want to sing? Man. The love and the, the passion, like just the emotion that you could put in it, mm -hmm. and like I just like I love like good music and stuff like that. That's for any any genre, but like I I just I don't know. It's just something in me. Just feel like this is what I like to do. This is what I love to do. You know, I do it. I do it on the streets. I did it in the streets in a barber shop, all that. So I go do it in front of a million people. You know, one day. But thanks, thanks. So you said you um performed in the barbershop before? Oh yeah, yeah. Like you just went in there and started singing? Bro, uh, nah, see, I set it up like, um, like one of my biggest inspirations growing up, actually like in eighth grade was Jacquees. Jacquees? Cause you know, he from the, he from the tower, he from the east side too. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, that's a singer. Like, you not, from where we, you know where we from, like yeah, it's a yeah. rap, straight rapping. But it's like, it's, it's kind of real on the singer, but now people coming up on the singing and stuff. But I was like, bro, I looked up to Queen. And I seen everything that he did and like how he the lens he would go. And I was like, bro, I go anywhere and perform. I get in a barbershop perform, like everywhere. Like barbershop, went on the street perform, street sign, everything. Like my whole little community, especially in Stone Mountain, like they know, oh that's a sign of God. So when I come out there and sing in the sing in the barbershop. We set it up like it was like a little concert or something going on. Yeah. And then like, you know, I just went up there, I was like, Contacted him. My dude drove with me down there. Like that. So, yeah. Okay, okay. That's that very different. That's yeah. very different. So, what does Hassani mean? Hassani is, um, it's a Swahili, Swahili name. Swahili? It means, yeah, it means handsome. Handsome. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And, you know, my, like, everybody else in my family got different names from, and they reach even my name. It's, it's crazy, but, you know, that's what they name. So, I'm, I'm grateful for, you know, my dude. Shout out my dude. She found the name. Like, oh, this is it. Hassani. So, Hassani yeah. is your actual real yeah, name. Hassani, Bob. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
So what made you want to have your real name as your stage name? Um, I think as far as being me, like, I don't like, uh, I don't know, I just want people to know this me, and this is yeah. what I got to do, like, this is what I do, but like, I don't like, I, I respect, like, everybody else out there with different names and yeah. stuff, but I was just like, bro, if I'm the only one, I'm the only one and only Hassani vibes, you feel me, it's different Hassanis out there, but I'm the one and only Hassani vibes, so, that's, this me right here, you want to get everything from me, you don't know my name, know what I do, stuff like that. Facts, yeah. facts. So I see, I saw on your page you was playing the piano. Oh, when man. did you learn to play the piano? Man, I've been dibbing and dabbing the piano since I was like five, six, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but the saxophone was my first. My first saxophone? Instrument. Yeah, that was my first instrument. Okay, okay. You ever did band in high school? Yeah. I did band in middle school. Oh, middle school? Yeah. That's how you learned to play saxophone? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. crazy because in marching band, I was like, bro, I was just trying. Like, that's one thing I was never scared of trying anything. You know? Right, you just so, dive in. Yeah, just dived in. I was first chair and saxophone. Me and my cousin, like, we was battling the first chair, like, a saxophone. And that was crazy, too. But once you play the saxophone, I got the keys down, so I get the keys down for the piano, too. Okay, so, yeah. okay. So, talk to me about the process on learning how to play the piano. Man, I'm still learning, like, now at, at college, too, because that's what I want to study, like, um, just arts, all of that. Okay. So, with the music and stuff, man, bro, that, that junk ain't no joke, but once you get it down, it's like, first you get the main chord, C, B, A, D, E, F, yeah. and then once you get all that, like, you're going to have the chords, and you're going to, my professor now, he's teaching me the chords, the main chords, like R&B, and different type of music I want to make, so, yeah, it's hard, though. Uh, but it's, it's a process. Okay, okay. So talk to me about your first time recording in the studio, recording your first song in the studio. Man, first song I ever made, uh, I guess I said I put out, was A Message for a Queen, the um, the Persian Rugs remix to that Jacquees Party Next Door song, something like that. Okay, okay. I went in my garage on one crutch. I lied to you now. I was on my crutches when I recorded that. How did that got on your crutches? Oh, yeah, honey. I got, um, I got when I got hurt in football. Okay. This was when it's Miller Grove too. And uh it there was the only time it started raining, bro. I swear to you not, bro. I'm finna get out of the game. I started linebacker that game too. Yeah. Bro. So it's the only time I get up of the um of the game. Coach was like, all right, bro, we finna take a sunny up. I was a captain and everything. So I get in the game, it started raining, bro. On that one time, bro, I swear. And are we running, I'm finna tackle dude. Like he literally, if he don't, if he, if I don't get him, he gonna score the touchdown. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, I'm finna get dude. Like we already up, but I was like, okay, I'm finna get him, and I'm finna get out the game. Hey. Coach was, I swear, he coach finna take me out. Bro, I hit him, pop. I'm on the ground laying. I'm just stuck. Everybody, the whole arena goes silent. My mama jumped down from the thing. She already knew. I'm telling you, my mama, mama already knew. I'm laying on there. I'm lying to you. I swear to you, not my leg up. Just stuck up like this, and my body's still on the ground, bro. Like the whole arena was silent. Like, like I never forget that, bro. And that's what that's why I say like, change everything. But it gave me a story to tell, like now. Yeah. So it it's did. it's crazy. But like, I went on there in one crush, and I hopped on there in my garage, and I recorded that song. I put it out on SoundCloud. Rest of history. Okay. But okay. That's all I did. I, it was on my phone, all on my phone. But now I just, I'm looking for better quality now. So, hey, I, so you know, started recording on your phone? Yeah. What um, now what app did you use? What software? Um, BandLab. It's called BandLab. Band oh, yeah, I heard of yeah. it. Heard of. So uh, I, went, I found the app. I was like, I'm fine, something. So I found the app. I actually screen recorded the song, the instrumental, and then it just went like that. Okay, okay. So was it like, because that was your first time recording yourself, did you face any challenges? Yeah, I ain't gonna cap. I did face challenges, but I felt the garage like it used my projected my voice well. Yeah, and that's why I still got the song up to this day. Cause I mean that's still probably like one of my number one songs. But it's like that, just the garage around it, like having my voice bounce off the walls and stuff on it. It kind of sound real good, but you know it's better quality. A lot I know it's way better quality now that I could get to it. But yeah. Hey, so what are you recording now? Um, I record, I still got my home studio now, and I got all my equipment, I'm about to work and save for all my equipment, so I got all that now. But I go to different studios and stuff like that, like I go to links and like home studios and stuff like that, but now I want mainly my, my, my own studio. Okay, okay. So, yeah. 
So do you be recording yourself? Yeah. Um, so talk to me about the process of learning how to do that because you basically mix. You basically the engineer oh, too. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Man, that's I'm just like that on like the piano. I'm still learning on that. Yeah. And um, I I've been meeting a lot. Of, you know, the music like it it gets you to meet a lot of new people and stuff like that. Thanks, so man. meaning that like I'm learning people mix. Hey, I could do this. I could show you how to do this and then and shout out the new sound records. Like I just um. Talk to them. That's a whole new um, record label. I just been talking to. We've been in contact, and uh, that's my boys out there. So they working with me now. But that junk, well, you know that mix and master. And that's really where it tells all. It's just like when you making a video, the editing, everything. That's the biggest thing. So like you know, you gotta have. I got the voice, but it's like once I have the mix and master, like going on presets, learning different like uh, voice tones. I could change my voice to. It's yeah. crazy, but it's it's dope for real. Once you get it down, but it's, it's hard. So I seen you done a good a good bit amount of shows. Yeah. So talk to me about where you have performed at. So um, my first show was at Arabia. Or once again, that was a homecoming. Uh, that was crazy because once again I went up there on my one my two crutches. Okay. Yeah, and I just popped up on there, and uh, <clears throat> I was cool with administrators, so I talked to all the administrators. I was like. Hey, I got this song, and it was clean. I made sure it was clean, so I could do that in front of the, um, you know, in front of the people. But the females went crazy, like you know, everybody went crazy. But I shout out to the females because you know they were screaming. But yeah, so once I once I heard that, I felt the love. I was like, bro, this feel right. Yeah. Like I was up there on the stage, and I was just up there singing, and they was shouting the words back to me. But that was hard. So yeah, that was my first show at Arabia. But then I just said, nah, something just told me, I swear, but I just, something just told me, like, keep going, keep going. Okay, so I found see. stuff, I found, I opened for Schooly. Uh, Schooly? Yeah. How you got on with that? Uh, Old Club Q, they had, um, they had these things, like, little contests going on. Yeah. And I was like, bro, I know I'm I'm the youngest dude out there, bro, for real. So, uh, I'm out, so I'm out there, like, I, on Instagram, legit, she hit me up. Just like, hey, come come do this. You can get a chance to perform for school, to open for school. So I, I went out there and just legit just went on the stage and just went crazy. But um, I, I forgot her name. I ain't gonna cap for it. But we still in contact to this day. But shout out to the whole, um, it's like indie indie artist events and stuff like that. Okay. So okay. I just wanted to keep getting my name out there, keep getting, hey, it's a new singer coming out, you feel me? Hey. So schooly, um, I was finna do um, Cowboy. But I, I ain't get to do that. What happened with that? Uh, that was part of the same little process. But um, I don't even know. I think we just didn't go that time. But you know, school was still going on. Yeah. Like, all yeah. while I was performing, like I just, I had to come home. And it would be like a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, something like that. I come home, finish my homework or something like that. And go to a show. Like go go out, perform somewhere. Like all the shows at Arabia, I was on. Fashion show, everything like that. All of that, so. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, which one of those was your most memorable performance out of all the performances you had? Dang. 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 Bruh. I think I got a top three, though. But. Yeah, talk to me about it. Yeah, Alright, so the top three, like the homecoming, was most definitely one. Okay. But then I, I just, each performance, I want to keep getting better as a performer, too. So, I always love getting the crowd involved. So, my second one was, um, it had to be a um, fashion show. I came out there, bro, threw my jacket out in the crowd. Just started going crazy. <laughs> yeah, I had to set it. I went down there, gave a rose to, you know, a female. What made just, you come up with that, though? Mm -hmm. bro, I, I, that. I swear, it's just something in my head just said, just do it. Like, it's just go for me as a performer. It's just natural, bro. That's like, like real TV I'm, shit. I'm telling you, that's, that's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> and I, it's probably because watching the TV and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, just watching stuff like Chris Brown and Michael Jackson. Like, just do all that. And I don't know, bro. I just grew up. I just said, so many of me just, like, just naturally, bro. I just, like, bro, this is what I'm finna do. Like, my mom was looking at me crazy. Like, everybody was looking at me crazy. I came out there with no shirt, bro. <laughs> with the rose. And then my second one, though, was the pet rally. Because that was probably the biggest one with the biggest crowd. The whole school. So that's when I really got the whole school on me. And I got uh, the teacher to do that for our senior pet rally. So I was coming in and thing. So I came out there. 
went crazy again through my jacket again. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get you know just you gotta keep that up. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what they gonna remember you, man. That and a little turtleneck, bro. They always knew about turtlenecks, so I had to come out with it. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. So, do you got any place or any event you would like to perform at one day? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, most of course. Um, what's that? Rolling Loud, all that, yeah, all you. of that, the big stuff. But I feel like I just want to create my own little stage. Like I'm talking about like something big. Yeah, you just like, gotta put some money behind. That's it. what I'm saying. Once once I get the right people, you know, put some money behind it. Yeah. But I know, like, I wanna do. I wanna reach out to all crowds too. Like I know, um. What Drake got booed at? Vlog and all that stuff. Uh, it was something going around. He got booed at some big concert. Yeah, I heard about yeah. that. I don't yeah. know where it was at. Though. Yeah, I don't know. I just want to go, like, any opportunity. Um, not any opportunity, but, you know, big stages and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Rockefeller, all that. So, so yeah, I, I could see myself, you know, just going up there. Because once the spotlight on, it's on. I got to let them give them something to remember. So. Thanks, thanks. Got to. Yeah. So how often do you go to the studio? Probably at least every day, every night. Every day, every night. But oh, yeah, because you said it's not your yeah, crib. at home. But but I try to like like no cap. I know I need some uh, breaks. No cap. Like sometimes I just take a mental break. If I if I'm not um in the studio like singing or sometimes I just be in there just listening to different like songs, and, like piecing together different things. If I'm not doing that, then I'm upstairs. I'm painting or drawing or. Like just trying to like work my brain with the creativity, cause I just I just can't be stagnant though. I just can't be not doing something. Facts. Most of, mostly like every day though. Mostly. Facts. Facts. Got to be doing something productive. I'm telling you, bro. So, how long did it take you to get a song together? Man, it take me. I ain't gonna lie, but like some people going in like that. For me, it, it's a process. Yeah. Like, it'll probably take me. I could say about the shortest was a week, but a week. Yeah. Ooh. No, not even a week. Probably like three days. Yeah. Know? That's for like like fast fast paced songs. But I just like I be trying to put my best in it. Yeah. So I would go over it and just per, I'm a perfection. Yeah, make sure it's yeah. Right. Right. On so that's why it probably take me a long time because I would look up words. Okay, what wrong with this? What wrong with this? And put it in my song and stuff. Facts. Do you ever um you ever go in the dictionary and try to like Bro, yeah. spam your vocabulary? I want that's what I'm that's what I'm doing now. I be telling myself to read, just read the whole dictionary. But I go to <laughs> rhymes. <laughs> I be, I go to rhyme zone though. And um shout out to rhyme zone, cause they done help me a lot. I just type in a word, I swear, every time I write, like I just type in rhyme zone and okay, cat, bat, bat, bat. So sometimes I just forget just cause in a rush of my mind yeah. and get stuff done, but I know, like, that creative process is long, but it creates some beautiful songs, so beautiful, beautiful music. Right, you just gotta take the time with yeah. So how do you begin your beats? Um, the first day was off YouTube. Okay. And now I got multiple producers that I do, like, um, Poppy on the Beat, all from the east side, too. Uh, Poppy on the Beat, um, Sauce by Steve, Global Joe, shout out to all of them, because they've been with me since, like, really, school, like, Stevenson and Arabia, and like I'm trying to reach out, I want to, you know, keep using stuff from the east side. Like, yeah, from your community, exactly. man, that's how it's supposed So that's how I'm doing, I'm using everybody, and I'm just with New Sound Records, um, all of them, like, they creative, using now new producers and just stuff like that, so that's going crazy though. Okay, okay, so talk to me about what's the message that you try to deliver in your songs? And I'm trying to do the most positive message out here. But that's like love too, like right. you know, cause like love is most to me is the most powerful, powerful, most powerful thing that we got on this earth. Like yeah. it, could, it could change you to hate, it could change you to like love, it could change you to do anything you want. But I want people to just come together, mainly, and you know just be able to pop their hair and just commune over it, something like that. Just I just wanna like, cause you could change the world with music. Yep. So that's what I want to do. Change the world. Facts. So love and stuff. Just keep promoting, you know, love and good vibes, really. Good vibes. Yeah. That's true. So talk to me about why you feel that, why is spreading love so important to you? Because everybody really don't care. Yeah. But you seem like you actually care. Yeah. So what, what, why is that so important to you? Well, I'm, 
paying. It's, if I like, I could answer it to you like straight up. That's what I do. But it's like something in me. Like I don't know, cause I was raised with love, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I know the importance. Like it's bro, it's not a lot of people out there that get this. Like this, like you feel me? Like bro, where we, especially where we from, and stuff like that. Bro, not a lot of people. I seen it. Like people just feel with so much hate and animosity, they don't know what love is. They don't mm-hmm. know how that feels. Stuff like that. And then you got that big thing on. Then you got different people just that have uh, have it all. But they don't even know how to give, what to give. Exactly. Yeah, so it's just like, bro, I want to spread that because, like, let y'all folks know, like, bring people together. Like, just like Michael did, like, Michael Jackson, when he went out to Africa, went out to different stuff. Like, it's not even just Africa because Africa not even that poor. But then, you know, different places, a lot of people don't have what we have, and I'm grateful and blessed for what I have. So I want to share that with the world. Like, that's just, I feel like that's just, you know, part of God's purpose for me or whatever he got for me. Man, I'm gonna chase it. So, I just know I'm I'm meant to be in some big crowd or something in front of somebody, in front of a lot of people, man. Cause I, that's what I just want to do, like, just promote, spread the love, just, man. Cause it's I'm telling you, man, the people, some people I ran into, yeah, just changing their life, like just by giving them some words or just like, bro, they could be filled with so much. I could see feel with so much anger, bro. I love you, bro. Like, what's up? Just talk to me on some real stuff, and. You know, it's just come back reciprocate. But that's been since a young age. I always wanted to do that. So right. I just feel like that's just my duty. I don't know. Ain't going to be blessed at the end just yeah, for that. Exactly. All right. So who all did you listen to growing up? Uh, I listened to Michael Jackson, of course. Uh, okay. What do you call it? Really, everybody, bro. Like, uh, I say old school, new school, if I can name some, like, Luther Vandross type stuff. Um uh, you know, hip hop like Nelly, uh, you know, man, it's a lot of people. Uh, what can I say? Like I said, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. yeah. If I could just name names, I can name Chris Brown, of course. Uh, yeah, the young nigga with the old soul. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's exactly. Like, you know, and once I get around, you know, people like our age, they can they notice that. Yeah. But, but I love like the new music too, like you know, Drake, uh, um, Nelly, some some of the Nelly stuff. You know, everything. Just a little bit. I, I like good music. So that like, sound good, bro. You fucking with it. Nudie, all of that. 21, all that. So, yeah. So would you say one of them had an influence on your music? Most definitely. Bro. Like, Which uh, one? i say the biggest one probably be, on my voice, would probably be Jacquees. Because I know we got the same type of like voice. Some people I say I sound like him. And Bryson Tiller, too. You know? But um, I like Drake. Drake be flowing, bro. Yeah, on some Cole. stuff. But uh, like as far as like a message, I say like J Cole type stuff too. But um, yeah, bro. yeah, all of them like everybody I feel in a way has inspired me. Yeah, I just, those right there. It's probably some more, probably some more, a lot more. But they like put that thing in me, like just okay, this how you gonna flow? Just find my own sound with it. So. Okay, okay. So, are you planning on signing or being an independent artist? I want to be independent for as long as I can, so I can build up that. Cause right now I'm building up the, you know, the, the fan, fan base and the leverage that I get, and it's really it's. it's hey, going if you don't got no fan base, the folks ain't gonna take you serious, man. They gonna throw ten racks at you. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> and I ain't trying to go for none of that. I'm trying to own all my all my music, all my masters and stuff. That's why I with the uh, the little independent label I'm with now. It's called yeah. New Sound Records, and so I signed with them like this quarantine. And, uh, you know, got my first acting gig, this quarantine, stuff like that. So, uh, building that, just getting a fan base up. So I want that leverage first. Fair. And then I'm a, I want a yeah. partnership probably more. But I want to see what's up with the label, what the label talking about, of course. Because, you know, they come with the M's. But okay. I'm trying to Partnership good, too, though. Yeah. That's probably That's good for a long time, I think. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking, long time. Fair. Some folks be, I understand a quick M because some people don't, don't have nothing. Yeah, that's but I, shit. I, I, uh, I, I wait, cause I'm patient for like what's gonna come out in the long run. I already know, so you know, I'm coming on some Jay Z type stuff, like thinking wise. So, facts, yeah. facts. That's what gonna make you win. So, what's the least you would settle for? Like once you got your fan base, how you want it and shit. Man, yeah. Man, they gotta call me a number, man. You talking about? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I don't even, 
I know, of course, it's not gonna be less than the M, bro. It's gonna be a lot more. Like, what's the? I don't even know the biggest deal that somebody signed for. You know? Shit, sure, I don't know the biggest deal nobody uh -huh. signed for. I know that boy. They said NLD Chopper signed for how much? They said ten million. Mm -hmm. I don't fucking can't even remember. Uh, but he's smart though. NLD, I learned from him too. Like he said, he's younger than us, bro. He, he's uh, smart though. Like he got that little partnership with. Uh, I forgot who, but I've been studying it. Though. Yeah, he got with a little ball dude. Yeah. I don't know who brother is, though. I don't know who Yeah, who but I bet, uh, hey, I, I don't know, but I say, what they throw at me, I know I'm going to have the, the, the fan base of the people to throw that leverage at them, to give them that number. Like, look, this is what I want. This is where I, where I want it. Because I know what the masters and stuff, mm -hmm. I'm going to have my music, I'm going to keep making money with that. And I learned about the BMI and ASCAP, bro, I had to learn about all that. But, uh, uh I don't I don't know, Cal, I put myself up there because I, I know too. my value. So I don't know, bro. I probably. Um, Just nothing less than a mil. Yeah, nothing less than a mil, 10 mil, really. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something like that, man. Facts, facts. They not finished shortchanging. No cap. So, you got any projects that you're working on now? Yeah, bro. Sunny Mix is dropping June 3rd, um, pre sale June 3rd. In June fourth, you know, dropping June fourth officially, but um, the signing mix is just straight remix, remixes and stuff. I like and everybody like I want to come on. I'm coming on old school. I'm coming on new, new school, school. Coming on Summer Walker, all of that. So like I want to show them folks that I could do this on any beat. Then you know, we got signing mix. We got uh, how many songs signing mix gonna have on? Probably like uh, either nine or eight, something oh, like girl, that. But girl. you know, something for them. Just to listen to yeah. while I'm getting the rest of the projects together. Because I'm already focused. Like, I'm looking at November right now for my project. But uh, the Lover Boy from East Atlanta, that's coming in November. So y'all stay tuned. That's your Because that's going to that's gonna be the one. I already know that's going to be the one. That shit sound hard. I ain't going to kill That shit sound hard. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. So what you think separates you from other artists coming out of the east side of Atlanta? Mm. Dang. What's up, saying? Cause most most East Side Atlanta like artists, bro, I say is real to themselves. I'm, I'm proud of that. We 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 rep East Atlanta with pride, with pride, bro. Yeah. So that's all I'm, I'm really big on. Um, <clears throat> what separate me is just my voice. I feel like I'm just different. Like and how I'm coming too, bro. I'm coming with a '90s old school type vibe too. Ain't nobody really lived that like yeah. like me before. And like I'm just coming. Like I just had a shoot yesterday, but I'm talking about straight '90s. At the glide, bro. Yeah. So, like, I'm just talking Who about. Who you shot with? Um, 201. 201. Yeah, oh, and shot my boy Joshua Digby. Both of them is hard from my school, too. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to bring a collective up from East Side, bro. Like, yeah. everybody that I know, bro. We all know what That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, them, um, I just know my, my, my 90s vibe, my little old school vibe. It's going to, like, coming in, bringing it with the new school and stuff. But I bring it in my own fashion, though. So, I just know I'm different with that. And my voice, how I'm coming on different beats. Because I go off and do a chorus first. I do, like, just a lot of different stuff, bro. And nobody doing, like, my sound. I play with my voice, too. Like, I know how to use my voice as an instrument. You know, people do it, but not to, I be trying to perfect it. So, you know. Facts, I feel that, I feel that. So, what's something that you want to accomplish before the end of 2020? Man, 2020, before the end of 2020. <clears throat> I want to get out this, um, I want to get out all the projects that I'm working on, most definitely. But I want to, um, you know, keep, uh, what's it called? Also, I want to finish my little art gallery I got coming up, too, um, with my painting and stuff. And uh, the acting stuff now, too, just getting into that. But I want to, you know, step, keep stepping my foot into that and stuff like that. And uh, just... A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I want to get out, but I know it, it's all going to work out, especially now. Like, it's good and bad with the quarantine, but Fair. it just made me more focused, though. Okay. Especially everybody dying and stuff, bro. Bro, I'm telling you, that put me in a whole other beast mode type stuff, bro. Facts, so, facts. So, what's some other advice, what's some advice that you can give to artists in your position that's trying to make? All right, stay true to yourself. That's the biggest one. 
Because I promise you, when you're trying to get into the industry so fast, it's not going to work out. And study. Like, study who you, you want to be somebody. You want to become something. You got to study it first before you even step step foot into it. When you step your foot into it, you got to learn what you want to do and how, how the route that they went. Because your route is different. But you got to learn, okay, what's up, what's up with it. Um, also, like, uh, <clears throat> never give up. Y'all got to keep going. You got to. It's going to be people. Oh, nobody knows what you got but you and God. Man. That's it. Nobody knows what you got. But people could tell you, oh, no, nah, you ain't like this. Ain't nobody know what you're what your, what you going to be in the future for real, bro. That's you. You're yeah. you creating a narrative. It's all about manifestation. Manifest. I speak that every day, bro. Tell me. Tell me. So, yeah. Hey, man, y'all going to make sure y'all check out that new song for you with JK out, man. It's going crazy. And y'all be ready for the Sunny Mix. And more stuff coming down the line. But thanks for catching some. A sunny vibes here. Yeah, yeah. I'm now checking out with Bag Talk. Too.